Three, two, one. Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with the Synergy Collaborative, Synergy Cafe, and the Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got a new friend on here, and her name is Rebecca. And I think, do you use your middle name, B, or you just go Rebecca Thompson? Rebecca Thompson. Should we call you RT? No, <laughs> just Rebecca. <laughs> I'm just joking. We can do that. <laughs> so what part of the world are you? You're on the East Coast, aren't you? I'm on the West Coast. I'm living in, in Southern Coast. California currently. Yeah, I'm originally from the East Coast. I grew up in Pittsburgh area and that lived in Rochester, New York. I was, I was reading your stuff. You had some North Carolina stuff, so I thought you were over Yes, there. I was, and I've been in California for almost six years now. Right in L.A. or where? You're just outside of L.A., Redondo Beach. I know where that is. I was out in uh, Covina, Glendora for a year and Studio City in Hollywood for a year. Oh, I've got a friend <laughs> in Studio City, yes. <laughs> it's a nice place to visit. <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> it's a nice place to live too <laughs> it is it's always uh, the, the thing is i'm from minnesota and we got the snow up here so when christmas comes the snow and yes California, that's, it's just not there and it's kind of weird that's very true <laughs> i have a friend who just moved from here to minnesota so really? she just finished her first winter so she survived it's really not that bad and you do get used to it I'm going to be 63 in June, so I'm used to it. I did spend a couple mm -hmm. of years out there in L.A. and a couple of years in Asheville, North Carolina, but I really oh. like it here. My future daughter-in-law is from Asheville. It's an interesting place. It is. <laughs> no, yeah. it's built on uh, mountains of crystal. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, and, the, yeah. and there's a uh, rainforest in those mountains. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful area. Yeah, yep. I lived in North. I lived in Raleigh area for ten years, and my son still lives out there in Greensboro. Okay, so, yeah, that's yeah. a lot different than Asheville, though. Asheville's its own little hippie town. <laughs> yes, <it's, laughs> Asheville's like a little plunk of like California that they stuck down in North Carolina or something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you married and got you got kids. I was married um, for many years, and that's part of the story of my book is how I found the strength to end my alcoholic marriage. Um, but I do have three adult children that. I'll give, bring me lots of joy. There you go. I don't have any. My wife's got one and she's very proud mm -hmm. of him. And mm -hmm. when we first got together, I was like the, uh, you know, it's, it's not my son. So I'm not the dad. And it was kind of tough right. at first. But now miracles happen. He's a wonderful kid and we all get along wonderfully. So it can happen. It can happen. <laughs> oh, I know it can. Absolutely. So how long have you been coaching? Oh, for actually for many years. I was in the corporate world for many, many years. I started as an industrial engineer and um, moved into organization development, which is a lot of team building and leadership development. And so as part of that role, it's working with a lot of um, early career leaders, high potential young leaders, and um, love that, love working with that group of folks. And just over the years, I've had a spiritual journey uh, as well and kind of evolved more into the, the life coaching, life planning uh, type of field. Well, it's a fascinating thing that, I like, like I was telling you earlier, my wife was is a coach, and mm -hmm. just the the concept of a coach. Some people think that oh, you're my savior, but all they mm. really are is sort of a, sort of an invisible rudder almost. They kind mm -hmm. of uh, give it's, you some direction, and it gives you. They they have this ability to ask you the right questions that makes you think differently, and all of a sudden you have these yes. aha moments. It's all about the questions. That's what I'm always asking myself. What is the question that I could ask this person that would really get them to, to see something differently or to um, you know, find their, their next direction? But it's all, it's all inside the person. It's all there. And so it's just a matter it of drawing it out. Like um, there's another friend of mine. He created this thing called question cards. And it's kind of mm. like affirmations. Mm -hmm. But instead of saying, I am wealthy, I am wealthy, I am a millionaire it asks the question, why am I wealthy? Oh. And it triggers your brain to think, wait, well, I only got this much in the bank, but you know what? I got friends, I got family, I got my health. And it changes your yes. whole perspective of looking at things. And that's kind of what coaches do. They ask you those questions that go, oh, I never thought about it that way. <laughs> and then the individual can't do that by themselves because they've got that the blinders on. That's so true. You're too close to it. You're too, you can't see. It's, it's like the fish doesn't know the water. You know, they always say the first the fish to discover water is the flying fish because <laughs> it got out of the water and then went back in. It's like, oh, 
this hey. is the water. <laughs> What's know? this? No <laughs> it is true. Mm -hmm. Do you have any specific types of people that you work with? Like sometimes people focus on women. Sometimes people focus right. on like athletes. Sometimes do you have any specific niche you work with? Um, I will coach uh, men and women, but I mostly coach, coach women. And a lot of times they're people who feel they're stuck in their lives somehow. And they'd like for something different, some, some meaning, or they're in a situation that they feel stuck in, that they can't get out. Um, just want to be, especially, I'd, I'd say people um, approaching a certain age, perhaps, that um, might be seeing, you know, I, I don't know how much of my time I have left, and I'd, I'd really like to make the most of it, and there's things that I want to do before I move on to a different there life. Is that is uh, that midlife crisis. I went through mine and at 40, and it was, uh, that's when I moved out to California with a sleeping bag. I gave up everything and kind of went out there and... Mm -hmm. Yes. Sort of homeless, but not really. I had a friend that had a karate school out there, so I helped him with mm -hmm. his martial arts events. So I had a roof over my head, but mm -hmm. at the mid, at night you roll a sleeping bag up and put it back in the car. <laughs> <laughs> you so know, some and people the other... use those four letter words, that four letter word can't, because they get stuck in that space. Yes. And you get to ask them those questions that have them go, oh, maybe I could get out of this situation. Yes, exactly. And I, I, sometimes it's just by sharing my own story because I was in a situation, um, I was married for many years to, to a wonderful man and you know, we have three great kids, but he uh, succumbed to alcoholism. And so I, I felt like I was in kind of a stuck place and um, took me a long time to realize that I could change my life and um, that I was worth it and that there was something better for me that I could have. So I think by believing it myself, that helps me to help my clients believe it for themselves. Right, they might be in that place where they go, I can't leave because I love him or I love her and I can't really leave. Yeah. And uh, we've got a kid together and yeah, it's, it, I, I'm abused and stuff, but I gotta, they don't exactly. realize that, you know what? maybe both of you don't want to be together and maybe the kid doesn't really want it to happen that way. And maybe you just separate and life is much better at Christmas. Exactly. My, <laughs> when, after uh, my ex-husband moved out, my oldest daughter said to me, I wish you would have done this 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, <you> know, <laughs> so staying together for the sake of the children is not necessarily the right thing, right? Well, it's kind of like that, you know, you see somebody that's got some spinach in their tooth, but you don't tell them because they mm -hmm. might, you don't want to embarrass them. Mm -hmm. so you kind of hold back, but they really would like it if you told them that. <laughs> exactly. So sometimes it's loving people enough to tell them the tough, give them the tough feedback, right? Mm -hmm. And I Absolutely. think it gets kind of miraculous when all of a sudden, again, they do have that aha moment and it just, wow. I didn't realize I could do this. Like someone that's, exactly. I can't leave because he's the breadwinner or she's the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to afford this on my own. Eh, not necessarily true, especially with the internet these days. It's so easy to kind of create a business and find your passion. And, you know, you get an yes. Etsy website and do crafts and start making $100,000 sure. a year. Whatever you love to do, mm -hmm. start doing more of that. And do, pursue do you do it. that too? Do you kind of search for the person's why? You know, what makes them go? You know, they reach. Absolutely. This, kind of coach yes. them through that. Yes, absolutely. It's all about helping somebody find what they're passionate about and what they love to do and encouraging them to do more of that. Because um, the, the more we spend our time doing what we love to do and we're good at, the happier and more productive we're going to be. And, and so it's sometimes from, it's just uh, finding out what that is. If they came from the space of like alcoholic relationship or something, there's probably a lot of like demeaning conversation and unworthiness. So they think, well, I'm really good at painting, but I could never sell this for $20. I mean, I just it, it only took me like you know four days to do it i don't know if i could say they don't know their value you know and exactly I, when, I, when i talk to people about that i say okay tell you what here's your value let's say we just snip off like the end of your finger here for like i'll give you a hundred bucks for it what do you say <laughs> oh my <laughs> <laughs> and they realize oh my god maybe i'm worth something <laughs> that's that's a good weird. example. That's a good example. That I'll use. I'll shamelessly steal that from you. <laughs> Why not? No, I was I was in that place. You know, like I said, I had the alcoholic husband, and I so I was running the household. I was working full time. I was taking care of the kids and managing everything. And yet, I thought that I couldn't make it on my own. 
I thought that I wouldn't be able to either financially or otherwise that I'd never lived by myself. We got married right out of college and I, it, I didn't think I could make it. And I had a friend who coached me. And so that's how I really found out the value of coaching. I took a coaching education program to learn how to be a coach through that process. I received a lot of great coaching and one of my friends was coaching me and that was also in the program. And she said, um, you know, why don't you just leave? And I said, I don't, I don't think I could make it on my own. I don't think I could. And then after I left years later, she said to me that used to frustrate me so much because you were already making it. You were already paying for everything. You were already managing the household. You were already running everything and you didn't see how much power you had and how much strength you had. Mm -hmm. And it's just what we were saying earlier. You don't see it when you're in it, you're too close to it. Um, but once you get out, it's like, wow, I really was doing all that. And I didn't even know I could. It's like situation right now where everybody's staying at home and they're not working and guess what? You're still there. So maybe it's possible that you could survive and maybe you don't need as much as you thought. You know, you cut back on the steak and start doing ramen noodles <laughs> or something it, you might be able to survive like when I, yep. I, I said i went out when i went out to california i went out there with six hundred dollars mm -hmm. and i stayed out there for two years so that's how i know wow. there's a higher power because the math doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly I survived. so well that's really cool I, I i do a lot of these interviews with coaches and sometimes there are people like there's a guy that calls himself the cigarette whisperer and he gets people to quit smoking Oh, wow. And, That's uh, great. Yeah. Bizarre people mm -hmm. sometimes. I know a guy, he's, he's a monk and he teaches. Oh, wow. How very cool. <laughs> very cool. Well, That's I use fun. a lot of um, unusual practices in my coaching as well, because along my spiritual journey to find my way, you know, out of my previous life to my new life, I took a lot of turns and became a Reiki master and I learned mm -hmm. about crystals and I learned about shamanic journeying. And so all the things that I picked up along the way, I do use those in my coaching. So all those um, tools in your tool belt, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Many tools in my tool belt. And, uh, you know, so I just, uh, trust my higher power and use whatever comes to hand. See, that's and, really good too. Cause if you got a lot of different tools, so, cause mm -hmm. there might be somebody that says, you know, when I grew up, uh, my mom told me to stay away from those crystals. And if you're using crystals, <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I also do Reiki. Oh, well, I've heard about that, that, and they might be acceptable to that. Yes. So you start to attract the right people when, you know, when you just the more you talk about yourself and you find your niche and, um, but I, I look at the science behind it too, because crystals all have a, um, as every, you know, we're all made up of molecules and atoms and we have a vibration, right? And the same mm -hmm. is true with stones and crystals. And so, um, because the human body is mostly made out of water, um, something that's more stable, like a crystal can actually have an influence on us. So people think, oh, that's just all, you know, hokey crazy stuff but there really is science behind it so I try to bring that in as well and my kids are uh, one of my daughters is a uh, my uh, astrophysicist <laughs> so um, I have to defend what I do with science you know well even so sometimes it gets into the common sense element of things like mm -hmm. um, the whole concept of uh, the body is so much water that a full moon is going to have an effect on it if it can move the ocean it can yes. probably have an effect it doesn't necessarily have to be a dramatic effect, but you got to admit it has some kind of effect. Absolutely. <laughs> we're more connected to nature and all the things around us than we realize. You know, we like to think that we're separate and that, you know, humans are independent, but we're all, we're all interdependent, all of, not only humans, but everything around us. And oftentimes you can't see it. You don't understand. Like, like if you see a cloud forming in the sky, if you didn't understand the science behind it, and all of a sudden you see this big white cloud growing and turning black and then water coming out of the air, how does that happen? It seems like a miracle, but if you understand it, you know. You know what always seems like a miracle to me is how birds always know they're all gonna gather at the same tree on the same day to fly north or fly south or whatever, you know? That is always amazing to me. It's like, how do they Texting. know? <laughs> they text. <laughs> what did they do before that? <laughs> what did they do Carrier before pigeon. that iPhone. <laughs> I don't know. I know mm. there's that. Uh, they all know which way to go, like the fish in the sea and stuff. You see yeah. them all going in the same direction. In a swarm. Mm -hmm. All the leader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I wonder, do you have a book or anything that you did? You've done? I yeah. do. I actually have two books. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, Can you show it, us the cover. You got a copy? Oh gosh. Um, Wow. Yes. Can you, can I get up and move and sure. come back? Okay. Yeah, don't don't right plug back. your cord. <laughs> okay.
So she's going to show us one of her books. That'll be kind of exciting. Or maybe both of them. We'll find out. And I'm sure they're available on Amazon. There they are. Dun, dun, dun. And I wasn't really yeah. throwing things around. <laughs> I wasn't really throwing things around in the background, but here I am. Yeah, so this is my book. It is my memoir, and it is called Rebecca Rising. Okay. And you can see that on the side, Rebecca Rising by Rebecca B. Thompson. Um, and it is a memoir, and it's, it's actually about my spiritual journey and some of the things we've been talking about today and how I found it. The, the subtitle is How I Found Courage and Self-Love Through Friendship, Coaching, and Conversations with the Moon. Um, so it, it tells about my spiritual journey on my way to um, ending my alcoholic marriage and moving so on. That's the life. kind of thing as someone's reading it, they can go, oh, my God, that's me. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. a lot of people have said that to me. That they, yeah. I've had a lot of feedback that people can really relate to my story and they've had similar things happen. And um, yeah, and I, I tell a lot about, as I said, the, the things that I learned along the way about Reiki and crystals and shamanic journeying. And I think it starts to um, make that those kinds of things a little more comfortable for people. And I started out as a skeptic, very much so. I wasn't exposed to any of those things as a younger person. And so I kind of tell my story of how, how I evolved into it. Well, I've got a background as a magician, so I'm pretty skeptical too. <laughs> I, can, I walk with, on both worlds here. Yes, What's exactly. What's the other book? The other book is called Sunday at 830. And I wrote this with my friend, Darlene Ryan. I'll tell you more about where that title came from. Um, my friend Darlene and I worked together for many years at the same company. We, and as I said, we, I was an industrial engineer early in my career. We were industrial engineers together. And we went to a class, I mean, at, over 20 years ago on life planning. And we started to use the tools that we learned in that class and have been using them ever since. And I'm over, well over 20 years. So the um, subtitle is Sunday at 8.30, but it's two decades of life planning. And it's about the process we've used because we learned it in a class, but we've evolved it and made it our own. Sure. And so that is a large part of my coaching as well as the Sunday at 8.30 coaching process. And why it's called Sunday at 8.30, um, we lived in the same city for many years in Rochester, New York. And then I moved to North Carolina we didn't know what was going to happen. We'd been meeting every week for years and years and, you know, I was going to move away and we were crying and all this. So we made a pact that we would speak on the phone once a week and that we would be, we would meet in person twice a year. And it took a while to kind of find the right time to talk every week, but we landed on Sunday at 830 Eastern time. And for 20 years, we've been talking to each other at that time, even to the oh, point where we have our families trained. It's like, hey, it's 8.30. You know, have you called Darlene yet? You know, and, <laughs> and that kind of thing. So it just the, the title just fell into place because um, there's the process itself, but the fact that we uh, are accountable to each other and we review our plan and we talk about our goals and we talk about the kind of life that we want to create, um, that's that's where the, you know, the Sunday at 8.30 piece comes in. So I got to ask, you're on the West partner. Side now. Do you guys still talk at Sunday at 8.30? It's 5.30 Pacific time now, but it's still <laughs> 8.30 Eastern time for her. So, <laughs> so it gets a, little, Works bit of, out. a little bit of a challenge that way. What the heck time is it? Oh, I'm late. What time is it? Yeah. So I, <laughs> it's fun. Darlene is very bad at that. She's always like, what? So what time? What time is it? So I, that's why we left it at 8.30 for her so that she could. You know, she would, she didn't have to be calculating. Is it plus three or minus three? I can't remember, you know. Well, speaking so. of time, I don't like to do these too long because people need to consume them. And I've been on these like three hour webinars and it's ridiculous. Sure. So Absolutely. Kind of I tight. know. Been and then what too. I do is I take this and I beam it up to the universe and let people find it and keyword it and all that kind of stuff. So how do people get a hold of you if they want to connect with Rebecca? I have a website and it is called Evolve Without Limits, all one word. So www.evolvewithoutlimits.com. And you can also email me directly at Rebecca at Evolve Without Limits. Evolve Without Limits. That, that, like people think uh, they talk about thinking outside the box. I yes. say thinking without the box. There you go. That's so great. Evolving without <laughs> limits. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Abundance is infinite. Exactly. It's I tell infinite. people when, when they say, how are you? I say a wonderful and a half and then some to the 10th power of infinity. Ooh, <laughs> I'm going to steal that too. <laughs> sure, it's all good. 
It's all well, good. Rebecca, I appreciate you taking the time. And if you want to do another one of these down the road, if you've got a new book coming out or you've got an event or something you might be speaking at or a workshop you're doing out there and you want to get some audience. Thank you. Do it again. I'd love sure. that very much. Thank you. Alrighty then. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I'm going to sign this off and uh, okay. the universe. All right. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Peace. <laughs>